In many ways, God is hidden to us. We cannot fathom His purposes. Still, we persevere in faith, knowing He's active. Runners in life's race must learn that God is too big for anyone to comprehend. A man named Job was sorely tested by God and then found some wisdom by discussing his plight with a young man named Elihu. Consider this. Is God big enough to superintend your suffering? From the Moody Church in Chicago, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Today, Dr. Lutzer continues his series, God, Why Me?, as he concludes a message on words of wisdom from a young man. And what I'd like to do is we try to conclude and to bring some, some relevance and some closure to the various points that we have made, especially about the hiddenness of God, is I'd like to challenge you with three statements that I hope that you remember. Possibly you can write them down and think about them as you have opportunity. First of all, uh, God hides. That is true. That is true. God hides. But He also exists. He also exists. What I'm trying to say is don't take the hiddenness of God and therefore conclude the absence of God. That would be a wrong step in logic. The fact that God exists... The evidence for it is overwhelming and powerful, and the more you argue against it, the more you really prove that only He could have created you. Years ago, when I used to teach at Moody Bible Institute, I used to teach what was known as apologetics, the defense of the faith, and we used to discuss, you know, the arguments for God's existence. There are four or five of them as to whether or not they are really logical and and all those other things. I don't do that anymore, not only because I don't teach uh, that particular subject, but because the older I get, the more I begin to realize something that to try to prove that God exists is something like trying to bring out a candle to light it to see whether or not you can find the sun. That's about the way I look at it. Uh, The fact is that the sun is there. It may be confusing to us. We may not understand it, but our very breath and all that we are affirms the existence of light and the sun. And in the very same way, God is everywhere. And if you're here today and you deny the existence of God, you are like a fish swimming in an ocean, affirming vehemently that water does not exist. The fact that God is hidden does not mean that he is non-existence. The fact that God is is overwhelming, powerful, and logically undeniable. There's a second statement I'd like to leave you with, is that God hides. God hides. That is true. He's very baffling to us, but he also cares. He also cares. So do not ever interpret the hiddenness of God as the indifference of God. You'll notice that even young Elihu points that out. Uh, He says, for example, in 34 verse 21, his eyes are upon the ways of a man. He sees all of his steps. God is with us. God is protecting us. God is keeping us. God is giving us breath. We see God in circumstances if we have the faith to see him in those circumstances. Yesterday, a friend of mine and I took another friend to the hospital. This other man who was admitted is very, very depressed. And I asked him whether or not there was anything that he had seen in the last few days that reminded him that God did care. And he talked about uh, seeing a, uh, a Dunkin' Donuts store and and he just craved one particular donut and he went there and discovered that they had one left and and he just took that as an indication of the fact that God uh, does care. God does care. Uh, I hope that he cares about his weight, but that's another story. Now, sometimes we can see God in those little things. The Lutzer family has had a number of I spies recently. When we were Younger, we used to play a game called I Spy with My Little Eye, something that begins with a letter B. How many of you ever played that game, I Spy? Well, I Spy with My Little Eye, lots of people who have never played that game. That's what I begin to see. But sometimes what we do is we can see the providential hand of God, even though God is baffling to us, 
uh, he's there. About just over a month ago, my wife called me at 4 o'clock in the afternoon here on a Monday, and uh, she said that she could smell gas in the basement, and I just assumed that there was nothing wrong. She said both pilot lights were on, but she had the presence of mind to call the fire department. And the fire department came and uh, with all of their gadgets, and they discovered as they got closer to the furnace why indeed their little indicators began to go off the charts because all kinds of gas was leaking into our furnace. And you know that if that had continued to happen, there would have been a massive, unbelievable explosion, maybe that evening, maybe that night, or whenever. And, and we as a family give thanks to God because we can see that God cares even when it appears at times as if he doesn't do what he should. He constantly is reminding us that his hiddenness does not mean a lack of concern. But there's a third statement I'd like to leave you with, and that is, God hides, but he also reveals. He also reveals. Uh, he's not just playing hide-and-seek with us. He does show himself. In the Old Testament, he showed himself through nature. In the very next chapter, we are going to see in the message next time that God is going to come on the scene and reveal himself directly to Job and what an experience that is going to be. And I hope that you will be here next time so that you can pick up on one of the most breathtaking passages in all the Bible when God comes out of the whirlwind and talks to Job directly and everything shakes. So God did reveal himself in the Old Testament. But I want you to know today that there's nothing in the Old Testament that compares to the revelation of God in the New Testament. If in the Old Testament we were to say that we had a candle, in the New Testament we really do have a bright light because Jesus appears on the scene. And you know, the Bible says that uh, Jesus, regarding him, no man hath seen God at any time, it says. But the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. And on the pages of the New Testament, suddenly God's hiddenness is revealed to such an extent that when Philip says to Christ, show us the Father and it sufficeth 